Okay, we got an order from a good customer over in the United Kingdom to build them a full frame jig, including the soft tail fixtures. We thought it would be a good chance to show everybody the general concept of what a frame builder's jig is, um, how it's used to build a frame, how our parts interact with the jig. And Big T is going to take you step by step through each and every uh, phase, each, how to make each and every part. Um, we're not talking about a um, necessarily a really high-end jig with tons and tons of machining in it. This is meant as a really simple jig that just just about anybody with with access to some decent tools could make in their home. It's made out of tube. It's not uh, overly rigid or overly designed. It's just a good way of holding parts in place until you can get them tacked. Uh, this is uh, this is the jig that we're going to be building in this video series. Um, it's just a real good simple uh, jig. Uh, some of the features of it, it has a, a fixture to hold the steering neck. That's probably the most important thing. Um, has a fixture to hold both your front and rear motor mounts, your front and rear trans mounts. Uh, like I said before, this one's going to be a soft tail jig, so we built a, we're going to build a fixture um, to hold this soft tail uh, frame uprights and, of course, the rear axle stanchion. All right, the part that we're working on right now is the jig deck base. Um, as you can see right here, it's the longest part of the jig um, that runs at the bottom and basically makes the foundation of the entire jig. Um, what I'm working on right now is is drilling these uh, these series of holes uh, in the bottom at the front um, that are going to hold the uh, head post of the jig which in turn holds the steering neck fixture. If you've been on our website you're probably already familiar with that part. Um, it's what holds the uh, the neck in place uh, when we're building the frame at the right um, at the right angle and um, we use these numbers uh, down here in these holes to <clears throat> uh, set the length of the uh, of the frame itself by uh, either lengthening or shortening the neck um, and what we did to make this piece it's um, pretty simple but it is a precision piece um, so uh, there are a few different um, procedures that you want to go through just as kind of a quality check first off we just started with a piece of this uh, um, 3 by 2 steel uh, square tubing um, cut it to length and um, uh, what we're going to do is uh, put it into the mill and uh, end up drilling these holes here and uh, a little bit later on we'll drill the holes in the center um, which would uh, <clears throat> hold the king post if you were doing a, a big twin uh, build and then later on we'll end up drilling the holes in the top that will hold the uh, uh, rear stanchion um, that locates your axle. All right, as you can see now, I've got our uh, first deck rail uh, mounted up into the mill, and um, just to talk about a f just to talk about a few of the uh, quality checks and procedures in order to make this um, this piece uh, really nice. Um, I'll go over kind of what we did. Um, first what I did was um, obviously find a way that I can get it set up into the vise so that when I drill all the way through I'm not going to uh, damage the vise by actually drilling into it. Um, I don't know if you can see very well here but I used a little bit of square stock to space it up off the uh, base of the vise and left some space on either side of it um, so that when the drill comes down through it doesn't hit our spacer either. Um, then I, uh, it turns out I got lucky here at the back. Um, I just used uh, uh, two, uh, one, two, three blocks stacked on top of each other and um, uh, ended up using our uh, little digital level to get level across the top from end to end and from uh, front to back. Um, and that's really important when you're doing something like this. Um, because if it's not uh, not that way and uh, you go to put your bolts in to bolt the two uh, bottom deck rails together they don't line up and since that's the 
main foundation for your entire jig, nothing's going to line up after that. Um, as you can see here, I've already drilled some of the holes. Um, uh, on this particular jig, they're uh, two inches apart, um, both this way and this way. Um, that way, whenever it's all finished, they can bolt up as you see here. Um, and as far as the drill itself goes, um, the, to me the best way to, to maintain quality is to make everything as rigid as possible to where you won't have flex and that's especially important when you're uh, doing any kind of drilling. Um, so what I ended up using is a, a longer uh, half inch basically center drill that way I can go all the way through the piece without having to both uh, change back and forth between a center drill and a regular drill bit and um, it'll maintain a nice tight hole and uh, since a center drill won't flex like a normal drill bit will, um, we can make sure it, that the holes are going to be flush all the way through. What you want to do in order to uh, drill these holes and make sure you, you really get them nice and uh, concentric with each other, I just want to probably turn on the lathe and use not too, uh, not too fast of a speed, but um, not so slow that it'll wear out the bit. And I'm just going to use light pressure, very, very light pressure. Um, not so much that you just rub, but that you're not uh, forcing the bit into the material. Any Anytime you force it too much, the bit is going to want to walk one way or the other away from ultimately the, the best hole position. And I want to, especially whenever you get to the wider part of the bit, it'll want to rub faster and uh, make it even dull. Okay, while well we were off camera, we uh, did a few more things here um, on the uh, deck rails, which we were talking about. Um, we've got all the holes drilled in um, both rails, uh, right and left. Um, we've got the center holes drilled um, where the king post is going to bolt up and the, the holes in the top for where our uh, rear stanchion is going to go for our uh, axle holder. Um, we also went ahead and um, Got the stock for the head and the tail posts, um, and I went ahead and drilled the holes in the head post that are going to uh, correspond with the holes in the front. Um, uh, the next step of the process would be to uh, bolt everything that we can together, uh, starting with the head post, um, get it bolted up, and the tail post will just wedge in between these two rails for right now, and we'll uh, locate <clears throat> where it's going to sit height wise um, and then end up using some angle iron to make some nice little uh, fins that will allow it to mount flush to the top of the deck. Alright as you can see we've got the uh, first uh, basic mock of, of the jig going on right now. Um, up here in the front you can see we bolted in the head post um, uh, as you can see down here we use uh, uh, four bolts to hold it in place and uh, that also makes it adjustable and uh, usually we like to use as many fasteners as possible the more you use the more accurate it's going to turn out in the end um, because there's obviously more um, points of contact making it line up um, we've got just a uh, little spacer in here right now for uh, mocking up the king post since we don't have it made yet and the tail post is sitting where it's gonna end up um, I went ahead and made some little uh, angle iron spacers for this um, and put a slot in them as opposed to the uh, a, a bolt hole just to kind of make it easier to get on and off um, uh, since the tail uh, stanchion actually holds itself in place in between these uh, these two rails, it it will line itself up. Therefore, the bolt holes here don't need to be incredibly accurate. All they're really doing is just applying pressure, so it doesn't uh, uh, doesn't move basically. 